will, I will be talking about my experience uh, to share what it is to be an amateurism player for a professional player. And, uh, and yes, uh, feel free to ask me any question that you want. Uh, it's the right time to ask. Don't be too shy. I have been like someone really shy, but it's okay. We are like uh, in a small group. So I know there's like uh, players, there's parents. So I think it's, it's interesting for you to, to ask the, the right question because sometimes you have worries. Sometimes you need advices about how do we deal with stress? How do we deal with a career? How do we become professional? So feel free. But before that, I will tell you a little bit about me and uh, my experience as a player because it wasn't easy. I'm going to share with you my journey as a player. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you about my story. This is me. I was lucky enough to, to be raised in Versailles, in the castle of Versailles. I'm, I was maybe six years old. I was by the side of my brother. I grew up in Versailles. For those who knows about Versailles and the history, I hope you heard about the king. Uh, not an easy story, not a beautiful story, but I grew up in a park. And I was really lucky to, to be raised in a fabulous place and to be playing football with my friends because my dad was playing football and all my friends were playing football. So one day I decided to, to go play football. I was in the, in the yard of the, in my high school and a girl came to me and said, hey, Laura, would you be interested to play football? And I said, yes, why not? And uh, one year later, I decided to join the club of Paris Saint-Germain. Paris Saint-Germain was my first club. So I started football, I was 12 years old. So 12 years old, uh, it's pretty late. So you see, for those who are like, uh, who started at five, uh, 10, everything can happen. Everything can happen. So I, I started football pretty late, but I started in PSG, not because it was like a famous club, not because my dad liked the club, it was just that PSG was a 15 minutes drive of where I was living. I was this. And besides school, I didn't have nothing to do. So I wanted to play football just to have an occupation. But at this time in France, in the 90s, I didn't know about the national team. I didn't know I could be a professional. And there, was no, uh, there were no professional players in France in, in the 90s. So I decided to play football just for fun. It was really just for fun. And uh, state by state, I was invited to take, um, to take, uh, to play in tournaments uh, and to, to see if I had the level to step to the, to the national teams, the youth national teams. And I got lucky because um, three years, after starting playing football, I integrated the National Institute of France. So yeah, the National yeah. Institute of France uh, was at this time, the only place for girls uh, to train five times a week in order to maybe one day be in the national team. So I was 15 years old, you can see me on the left. I was really small, really skinny and uh, and I integrated the national, the national Institute. So we were training five days a week, one hour and a half, but I was so small that one training, I had to play with the boys because, during, because uh, on Wednesday, all the girls were doing lifting, but me, I couldn't because I was too small. So they said, you are going to train with the boys. So I went to train with the boys, it was not easy. But it was really interesting because I learned how to, to use the impact. But most of all, I, I learned how to kick a ball with some famous French coach uh, who trained, for example, uh, Nicolas Anelka, Thierry Henry. So this institute was like a really interesting place to play. But it was not easy because uh, I was really shy at this time. And at this time, I was also an aggressive player, which I was, if you look at some in in videos on internet. And when I was in the Institute, I was called to be too aggressive on my with my teammates. I was a defender and they said I was really aggressive. 
So when I was in the Institute, I wasn't feeling myself. I was feeling a lot of pressure. I didn't want to stay. And I sometimes, a lot of time, I wanted to stop football. And I will share with you this story. Uh, when, uh, one time I was at practice. I, was, I missed a, a pass to my coach. And my coach, he was really competitive. And he told me, Laura, you don't have the level to be in the Institute. I don't think you should continue to stay in the Institute. Go back to your room. You don't have the level. It was, it was really hard. It was really hard. Um, I was crying and I went to my room and I called my mom. Usually I was not calling my mom. I was always calling my dad. But this time I called my mom and I said, mom, I think football is not for me. It's too competitive. I don't have the level. I'm too aggressive. And so my mom told me, okay, I will tell the coach and we will talk. And uh, I will tell him he should not talk to you like this. I said, okay. Usually my parents are really shy. So I was surprised that my mom told me that she will talk to the coach. And so on Friday, when I was leaving the institute, like every week, my mom, my mom came and, talk, and came to, to, to bring me back home. And then she saw the coach. And the coach said, told her, hey, Madame Georges, where is Laura? I hope she's doing good. I know uh, she had a hard time this week. And so my mom said, yeah, she's okay. No worry. Everything is good with Laura. And me, I was, I was, I was like, okay. Uh, I was looking at my mom and say, uh? like I was crying and now you're saying it's okay. But my mom said, okay, we will talk to the car. We will talk in the car. So my mom talked to me in the car when I was going back home. And she told me, and this is an advice for you guys. When someone is criticizing you or telling you that what you're doing is not good, it may be an, the best advice that they are giving you. It means also that maybe they care because they want you to improve your game. So I was not really understanding what she was telling me because I think that when we like some, when someone likes you, they are nice to you. But she said, no, 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 no. When someone wants you to improve, will tell you to change different things in your game or different things in your life. And so she told me, she gave me this example that my mom didn't go to school too long, but when she was in school, she was in the back of the class and she saw that the teacher liked her because he never asked her any question. But at the end, the teacher didn't care about my mom. He didn't ask her any question, so she could not improve as a student. So she told me, whenever someone is giving you advices, it's because they care about you. When someone is not telling you anything, watch out. Mm. So after this, I went back to the Institute and uh, my coach came and talked to me and gave me advices. And at the end, I did five years in the Institute. <laughs> so everything went well. Uh, the coach was hard on me because he wanted me to improve. So I spent five years, and then I decided to leave to play for the United, in the United States in Boston. I became a student. I got a scholarship who was paying uh, my three years of study and of football in the United States. It was a great experience. Uh, I wanted to go to the US in order to live another experience to change the French mentality because I was really criticized to be a an aggressive player, but uh, in the US, I was welcome as a new player, fantastic player from France, and I loved the experience. I got the chance to meet a um, psychologist, sports psychologist, George Mumford. He was a psychologist of Michael Jordan, of the famous basketball player. And uh, I told him when I came, I said, you know, George, uh, I'm criticizing France. They say I'm aggressive. Um, what can you, what type of advice can you give me to, to not feel like uh, a shame or to not feel uh, too shy when I play? And George gave me the best advice, which is uh, to know who we are and to stay who we are. So I was an aggressive player and that was my strength. But I thought that I had to change. I had to become a more technical player. But at the end, 
I just have to be myself, to be an aggressive player and to continue to be the same player. But at the same time, I work on the side uh, to become a, a more complete player. So at the end of my study and after three years in Boston College, I got my diploma. I got to improve my game, not because I was training more, but because I was more prepared mentally. I was feeling more myself. I was feeling more confident in myself. So after my three years in Boston, I went back to France. And I went to Lyon because Lyon wanted to win the Champions League. I got called by the president of the club uh, to, to have a new challenge. And as you see, uh, I got the chance to win the Champions League, but I also got the, the bad luck to lose it. I won it two times. I, lose, I lost it two times in Lyon, but Lyon has been a great experience. I could tell so much about Lyon. I became professional in Lyon. I was treated like a pro with the president. I got a salary, but I was also studying. I was still studying in a master degree in communication. Um, I did my exam to become a, a soccer, um, yeah, a trainer. I did like a training session to become a coach also because I wanted to understand better the football game. Um, yes, I became a professional player on the field, but also outside the field because I was taking my exam as a coach. I was studying my games, the games of other players. So I became a real pro in Lyon. But then after six years, my, the coach of the team told me I didn't have the level anymore. I said, OK. And then I left. I went back home. I went back to PSG, my first club. And I thought I would be finishing my career in, Lyon, in PSG. But the problem is that the coach who told me to leave Lyon became the coach of PSG. He's not on the picture. But uh, at the end of uh, 2017, the coach didn't play me. I was playing with the reserve team in PSG. So I went to Bayern Munich. I did five months in Bayern Munich. And then I finished my career. And uh, today, I got the privilege to work for the Federation. I work for um, uh, to develop women referees. And today I'm working uh, alongside uh, uh, Francois and his team uh, to develop the international relation of the French Federation, to bring the best of France in the different countries, but also to learn from, uh, from different countries. And we are working with, with you in Singapore. So that's why I'm really happy to share my experience with you. And yes, um, I also, I'm also a FIFA, um, we say FIFA legend. So I travel uh, in the world, I would say, to meet young kids. Uh, you have to know that in some countries, girls or boys cannot really play as they want to. Some players, some kids live in camps uh, because they have to, to leave their country because of the war. And I'm also an ambassador for UEFA and so, to travel to develop women's football abroad. And it's been a, a, a rich experience. So yes, and today this is my resume if you want to hire me in your school, <laughs> the academy, you never know. Yeah. Maybe. So yes, I'm done. I, have, I could talk a lot, but uh, now it's uh, your time. If you have any question, uh, feel free. Uh, don't be ashamed. Everything is interesting and I'm more than happy to, to share who I am. Thanks a lot, Laura. Thanks a lot. Uh, no, really, really interesting. I'm sure, that, I hope they have some questions. Uh, from my side, I, I, I took also some notes before I let maybe the kids play, uh, the speaking. Uh, first, I would like to come back on a few advice that you, 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 give, you gave to the kids because it's something, uh, Patrick, you, you will be, uh, I, I think uh, you will agree with me. We spoke a lot about, you know, when you speak Talk about criticism, you know, that you have to accept the criticism, criti criticism, sorry, and, and because sometimes it's a gift. Can you stop the video? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because uh, sometimes sometime it's true that if you have a coach who can be tough with you, but at the end, it's because he cares. And I think, guys, uh, you know, when Coach Arvin, Coach Clifford, uh, Coach Kunal, Coach Patrick, sometimes they're not happy, they ask you this, this. It's because they care about you, you know, uh, and that's the right example. Sometimes you have 
to accept the critic and also in a way accept it as a as a gift. And also Laura mm -hmm. spoke also the about the fact to be about the mentality. I think Coach Clifford Coach Clifford is here. I think he did an amazing speech to the kids uh, la last week uh, at, uh, uh, at the academy about that to be mentally prepared. It's more about the mentality than the the, the skills in a way. Uh, there's this and another. Thing I, I, I noted, and it could be interesting also for the parents, if there's few parents in the call, you spoke mm -hmm. about the fact to train, to play, and to study. Mm -hmm. Because you got a master degree, and see, guys, it's possible. You can do both. It's not, oh, I have to study, I cannot play football, or I want to play football, uh, I don't have time for school. You have to be ambitious, and, and you can do both. Because Laura, she did an amazing career as a football player, and now, She's doing an amazing career uh, inside the French Football Federation. It means she has a cake and cherry on the cake. <laughs> uh, so thank you for that. Uh, uh, I don't know if some people have some question. Uh, uh, just one thing I want to, I would like to speak about because for you, Laura, in the call we have uh, uh, Malou. I think Malou is here, Patrick. Uh, Malou is one of the players of uh, Arion. And you know, all of you guys, uh, and maybe also for the new player, we have a partnership with this club, Arion, who is playing in the Singapore Premier, the Women's Singapore Premier League. Uh, Patrick is is uh, is coaching the is coaching the club. A uh, few of the the, the, the the players are playing with the national team of, of Singapore. Uh, the idea of this partnership is to give you the opportunity, and I speak about, to you, uh, uh, the, the player, uh, for the best of you, uh, when you will be 16, 17, 18. Uh, to train and play with Arion. It means for the best of you, if you have the opportunity to become a real football player, professional football player, uh, that's the purpose of, of the partnership, to give you a door, uh, window, uh, whatever, to, 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 to this new world in a way. Um, so guys, I don't know if some people have some question. Any question from your side? Don't be shy, please. Because it's, just not the every day. it's not every day we can bring someone like mm -hmm. Laura. So please enjoy. <laughs> Any question, even the parent? And not only the girls, huh, by the way. I, I, got a, I got a question, Steve, but oh. I don't know whether the fan is going to be louder than me. Yes, you can. Uh, Laura, the Arvinder is one of our coach. Yes, coach. Of course, I, the coach can ask questions. <laughs> yeah, hi, Laura. Uh, Thank you so much for, first of all, taking time out of your day to address everyone. I'm very happy to see all the girls here. Now, you talked about, you know, first of all, being criticized as being an, uh, being, uh, an aggressive player. How important was it for yourself and for your career for you to express yourself as a footballer and the type of player that you are? Um. Mm. What was important for me to express uh, as a player? You know, I was I, I was really shy when I was a kid. I was really really shy uh, because it, it, it's in my culture. I'm French, but my parents are also uh, from the Caribbean, so it's uh, a colony of the French uh, of France. And in this education, you have to be you don't really share uh, your point of view. Sometimes you have to back up. You have to be really polite, which is really important. But as a person, you don't show up too much. And as a player, I could feel like uh, I needed to express more of myself. And I use football to, to, to grow as a person. And it's true that as a player, I was really aggressive. And, uh, but I knew I was nice to people. And as an adolescent, when we work in a group, we have to feel that you have to be like everybody. And as I said, when I was in the institute, you, you live in a group, so we go to school together. And sometimes there's, a, you know, uh, sometimes teachers are not showing up and players are like, oh, let's go back to, to the training. Let's not go to school. And sometimes you feel that you have to be like everybody, like to do the same thing because you live in the group. And people are telling you also on the field, oh, you are too aggressive. This is not the World Cup. And you want to be like everybody in the group and say, I don't want uh, to be on the side. So I need to be maybe uh, not playing the same way and to be discreet. 
But then I, I said, uh uh, I cannot lose myself. We cannot lose ourselves when we play football, when we play a sport. We have to express who we are. And that's why I say school, football is the best school for life. Because like in life, sometimes we feel we have to be like everybody to be integrated. We've, we think that because we are in a, in, a, in a club or in a group of players, we have to be the same. But a good group has to integrate everybody the different ways. But I learned this letter. I learned this letter. And, uh, but I use football to express myself. Um, but if I had, I was a defender, but if I had to choose, I think I would be more midfield because I like to connect. <laughs> and as a defender, I was more cutting the action. But yeah, I don't know if I answered your question, but uh, I use football to express myself. I use football to travel the world. I use football to pay my study. I use football to learn languages. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's super great. Uh, very, very insightful. And I hope every one of you guys actually heard what Laura actually said. It's really, really important about the lessons you guys can pick up from football. It's not just about playing football. It's about the life lessons that you can pick up too. Thank you, Laura. Because it, it, you, you, you're right. There's many, in a way, there's many reasons to play football, of course. Huh? Everybody, when we are kids, we all dream to become a professional football player, but it's not only about that. It's a question of health also, staying fit, being happy, making friends. There's many, many, many reasons. But in a way, it leads me to, to another question. It means, of course, you have many reasons to become a football player. So at the end, what makes the difference between, uh, I think it's maybe the same for male and female, I don't know, but uh, the one who is going to succeed, uh, the recipe, let's say, of success, and the one who will, like me, for example, <laughs> stay amateur, <laughs> is it, uh, what is it, commitment, what is it, what makes the difference? Um, I would say it's, wow, it's, it's talent, it's talent, a small part is talent, but then it's, a lot of training because you can have the talent, but if you don't work at it, it's not gonna work. And if we look at the professional player, someone told, told us about CR7, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is the typical example of the guy who works a lot. He works on his football, he works on his health, how to eat, how to sleep well. Uh, after, after training, he's still working out, after games, work out when you come back home um, it's a lot of work it's a lot of dedication football is a, it's fun it's a game but to take it to another level it's like to to be passionate about it to not play football for the money it's to play football for the passion to understand the game for my part uh, I became more professional when I study my game when I uh, I learned what the coaches were expecting from me. I was not just coming to the training and say, okay, today I'm going to do what the coach said. I was coming in the, in the training to know, to have with some goals, you know, okay, I'm going to do today uh, to, to, be, to do more quality passes, more headers, play on my left foot. I was a right foot, so work on my left foot. I had small goals, all this. Uh, and then the preparation, a good sleep, uh, the good meal to eat well, ask questions to the coach. Uh, I was more professional, not like uh, in a serious way to say, okay, I have to be like this, but to, to be okay. Uh, I have to make it like a lifestyle, be like a, leave it like a pro. This is what makes the, 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 the difference. And, and on, the, on the side, I was not just leaving football, I was also studying. Uh, some people also have other occupations. So we are not just about football, but we also have like, we can breathe, like having friends around, and not just being in, in football. It's a balance. It's also, yeah, all, yeah. all around the football in a way. It's not only show up at the training, doing the one hour, 30 minute training, and that's all. It's how you come with what mentality, the fact, yeah what you want to do during this training yeah. and yeah after that when you go to bed and blah 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 and nutrition yeah. and everything yeah. so, and the humility too <laughs> because yeah. today we can be on top and the next day we can be like whoo not feeling good but this is life and it's yeah. the time to okay how do i come back 
after being sad uh, about after being disappointed or oh, can i come back better how can i improve because this is like this the high level is like how oh, do you manage the bad time how do we do after losing a tournament how do we do when my i didn't do a good game and that makes a difference some players talk they are too disappointed and some players will say okay we don't give up we will continue to be better And um, from our side, I think you know, we have also noticed something maybe more specific to the to the girls. It's uh, the fact being shy. You spoke about you that you were shy, and uh, it's true that it's not a big issue for us to 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 hire in a way to uh, new 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 player or boys. But for the for the girls, it's a bit more complicated because I think first they are shy, shy to come alone, shy. Mm -hmm. So what you should what what would you would you say to to a girl like when she comes she's alone she doesn't she don't, don't doesn't dare to speak to, to the other uh, the other one because they are really shy for most of them yeah i was really shy and i when i play with the even with the girls i was shy so when i play with the boys i was like oh la la la, la. i was already thinking it's not gonna work they are going to be too hard on me i'm not gonna be nice i don't know i was asking a lot of questions but then i said okay it's okay i come with who i am on the field And I do my best, and I was accepted because I was doing my best. But I think we sometimes we need uh, so to ask some help and ask the players and say, okay, it's, it's, I'm new, can you help me? And this is all, you know, a little bit of communication and say, okay, I need help. But also, I'm sending message to the boys to say, if you see a girl, don't hesitate to welcome them to say, are you okay? Do you need some help? Not be too hard on the girls. They need support. And you girls don't be don't be afraid to go and ask some help. And uh, yeah, and show you best. And be positive, not thinking, oh, it's not gonna work. Just go. And then you will see. Just go and have fun. That's all. It's because sometimes we are too negative and we are too scared. But let's go. Okay, I'm gonna have a good day. I'm gonna have a good training. I do my best. And that's all. This is how it works. And little by little, people will come to you. But stay positive. <laughs> it's just football, it's just for fun. Let's That's not forget to come for the fun. <laughs> and I hope, guys, you well noted data huh? when you see a new new player, new, new girl coming, you welcome also. But it's also for uh, not only for the for the boy, for, for, for the girl, but for any new player. Huh? Any uh, new player. I spoke about that. Uh, I can see on the list few of the players. I can see Michel, Michel, I think you're here. Uh, Michel is one of the lovely boys, uh, one of the goalkeepers of the academy. I always ask him, hey, can you help me to welcome the new, the new, new kids, new boys, new girls in the academy? I think, yeah, it's really important. So you have to do that as well, guys, huh? From you, even alone, even without us asking for that. It's really mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Guys, I would like some questions. Is, <laughs> any, any question? Any of the girls' players? Yeah, where the are girls the girls? The boys, the, clubs, <laughs> the girls from the clubs. Uh, Harwin, who can we ask? Uh, you're muted, Harwin. Harwin no. Malou, Malou ah. you, don't have, you don't have yeah, any yeah. question, Malou? Malou, because Malou because, is the because, one from Ariane. You know, Malou, Malou she's uh, one of the players of the Ariane, and yeah. uh, uh, it's amazing she's uh, there tonight because uh, nice. I can compare Malou with uh, Laura. Ah. They have the same profile, and she plays uh, center back also. And she, she has the same profile than you, but she's very shy, and she has a very good potential. And I want her to go up, and I think she should ask one question or something like that, how to improve. Uh, where are you, Malou? Malou I'm here, I'm here. Uh, no, uh, uh, put your camera, nice Malou. Okay, put your camera, on. Malou. <laughs> I'm very happy Malou is there. Hello, and, uh, Malou. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah, it's so, it's so nice to hear you talk and hear about your career. It's very inspiring, um, especially um, I'm currently working. So some, sometimes um, at, well, I'm like 25 right now. So sometimes, mm -hmm. especially for a women's career, you wonder how, how much longer can you play football? So did you ever um, like, be, did you ever encounter such a situation where you're like oh maybe i should put my boots down or like what made you continue in this in football when 
I, I think until very recently, women couldn't really see a long career in sports. Hmm. It's an interesting question. It's true that at a certain time of a uh, career, we're like, okay, should I stop playing? Should I go to work? Uh, it's it's going to be simple. And uh, you're going to say, oh, you're not answering my question. I would say you have to listen to your heart, listen to your body <laughs> to see if you still have the legs to play. And I think you just have to see uh, what you really want to do in life, which is the most important. Um, <clears throat> what type of study or work you're doing? Are you happy in what you do? Do you think that with football, you will be more happier? And can you play and work at the same time? Or can, do you want to be a pro? And what does it take to be a pro? This is our, that are the question that we usually ask ourselves uh, to see, okay, am I at the age that I am, can I go to a pro uh, situation? Or should I improve or should I stay in my career, my professional career, and sometimes go to play on the side? It's just up to you. Do you know what you want to do? Um, I mean, at the moment, I want to keep playing football, but thank you so much for answering my question. But is it like um, a problem for you to study, to work and, and play at the same time? Uh, no, not at the moment. I'm very thankful that my uh, situation and with the football academy uh, being so supportive, I'm able to play football at least once a week, yeah. Nice, nice. So always, always tell the people you work with or study with that you play football, if they can like help you to get like the good schedule, because people will like to have like the profile of athletes, True. because yeah. they know that you 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 show the the right uh, you like you give the the good tones around you, like showing like yeah she's able to play and she's smart and everything. So yeah. always put this in the balance so they can support you at work or in your study. Okay. So you don't have to, to make a choice, work or study or just play. So you ask them, to, you want to do both. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Any more questions? I need to mute, so, sorry. It's uh, uh, just to also follow up to understand, uh, unfortunately also, um, it's not so easy here because you know, the world is under dark dark times, you know, and uh, in, in Singapore, uh, Singapore is the opposite of France. In Singapore, in Singapore we don't have any uh, COVID case, but we have a lot of restriction. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, they are really not joking with that. And unfortunately, unfortunately the, the, the girls team, they cannot play 11 aside, side uh, and probably not this year. So lucky coach Patrick, I think doing a really nice job. Uh, good training with what we can on, uh, you know, using this, uh, Man, dealing with this restriction, but it's it's so that it's not uh, not nice. Uh, Malu is really committed, coming every training, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. and I think one of the advice but you spoke about that it's also uh, when they are outside of the pitch, how to stay fit, how to you know uh, nutrition. We spoke about that with some of the girls, like they they will also do the job by themselves because we cannot train them more than what we do at this moment. We are not allowed. So it's not, it's really not easy, yeah. Yes, so don't uh, give up. <laughs> yeah, exactly, don't, don't, mm. don't give up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, more question? Yeah. It's, yeah, one, it's, one, it's one thing we don't face, uh, they never give up. And uh, I, can, uh, I, can, uh, I can say uh, to train the girls uh, like Ariane and the girls in the academy is a big pleasure because they are very committed, uh, they are very concentrated. And uh, they listen, they always, when they ask a question, it's not a question to, to say, why, why would we do that? Or it's to, uh, to, to get some advice. And uh, right. it's very good. Sincerely, training the girls, it's, uh, I like it. I, nice. I never trained girls before, just in China two years ago, but uh, uh, it's amazing to train the girls. And, uh, Perfect. Mm -hmm. And we have some uh, some girls in the academy or the, yeah. they are very uh, passionate. I think of uh, uh, Lee June, who is a goalkeeper uh, with, with good skills. And uh, you, they, you, they you have a question? I think she has a question. I yeah, so. I do. Yes. Hey. Yeah, hey. Lee June hey. is, a is a goalkeeper. Nice. Amazing goalkeeper. Amazing goalkeeper. 
question. So my question is, I play a lot of sports like over the years, and there's always like this obstacle where everyone will be like so discouraging, and it always feels like you are like fighting alone. So how do you? Well, what do you do when you feel like giving up? Oh, you know, when I feel like giving up, I think it's important that you always have like someone you can rely on, someone you can talk to, someone who can give you the advice, someone when you feel sad, you can still talk to this person who can always push you to say, okay, don't give up. Always find someone you are confident when it's hard, you don't stay on your side, but you talk to this person and say, oh, it's really hard. Oh, la, 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 la. And this person is going to tell you, don't worry, it's going to be okay. It's normal to feel sad. Everybody feels at this moment sometimes like sad or want to give up. But sometimes we just need to talk to one person and say, okay, this is what is happening. It's important to also feel that we are vulnerable. Everybody has a certain time in his life or in the year, we have moments where we feel like, I want to stop. I want to finish all this. And then they tell us, okay, it's going to be okay. So what's find a mentor? We call this a mentor. What I do, I also go online. I go to YouTube. <laughs> and I go, I use how uh, to not feel too sad or discouraged. <laughs> and there's also speeches who give us advices. And it feels good because we feel we're not the only person to feel discouraged. Uh, it's interesting to see what videos there is on there are on, on, on YouTube for uh, motivation talk, you don't give up and everything. And always remember why you are doing what you do. This is really important because when we feel sad, when we want to give up, when we don't know what we want to do, it's easy to give up. But when you say, you know exactly why you are doing it, it's hard to give up. So let's say, uh, so let's say you want to be, you are a goalkeeper and you want to have a good season. Okay? You want to be a goalkeeper who, have, who is respected. Mm -hmm. You want to be a goalkeeper who, um, who inspires the other girls. You don't know that, but you are inspiring people around you. You may not know that, but girls are watching. So you say, okay, I want to be a goalkeeper. I want to show that girls can be a goalkeeper, that girls can play with boys. Uh, I want to be a better goalkeeper. So you have all these goals, okay? Let's say you have a bad game and someone say, oh, you are not good, blah, blah, blah. It happened. But then you say, okay. I didn't do a good game, but what do I want to do? And your goals are further than the games that you did. The goals are you want to inspire the girls. You want to be a respected goalkeeper. Those are bigger goals, okay, than just the game. But when you remember your goals, you say, oh, it's okay. I didn't do a good game, but my goal is to be a good goalkeeper. My goal is to inspire people. You see? So it's important, sometimes you put your goals on the paper. So you always remember. And so when you have our time, you read your paper and you say, ah, okay, this is what I want to do. And this is what I want to do for this and this reason. I want my family to be proud. I want this and this, okay? And when you read the, the, your goals and you say, okay, I'm not gonna give up. This is how it works. Just put the goal somewhere, talk to someone. And then when it's hard, you say, okay, let's see what I have. Mm -mm -mm. And you won't give up when you know exactly what you want. And when you have one good person to talk, you're ready for the world. I'm telling you. <laughs> Thank you. But you know, you know guys, huh, that uh, you can also uh, always speak to us. The academy, we are not only here to train you, huh? 5 to uh, 6.30 and bye-bye. This is, you know, that the academy is going way beyond that. I think, you know, the coach now, Coach Patrick, Coach Arvin, Coach Clifford, any coach, uh, mm -hmm. you can go to them, say, I'm not feeling well for that. I'm not feeling confident. I'm not, we are here for you as well. Huh? 
And uh, mm -hmm. we know that sometimes even the kids that want there to speak to their own parents, we can do the link as well. We, can, we are here for that. Okay, guys. So you never hesitate to ask us to speak to us if you have any issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really important. Other question? Who? Abby, where is Abby? Yeah, Are you Abby. hiding? Abby is hiding. Abby. Hello. Ah, come Abby. Do you have a question for Laura? Hello. Um. Uh, I don't know what I'm thinking. Um. So. Oh, she's wearing, she's wearing your, the t-shirt. In your career, um, I'm sure you have faced like injuries, like long-term injuries. So, uh, my question is, how do you like overcome the recovery period? Okay, uh, I say, uh, so how do I overcome injuries? Yes. Okay, um, so I was lucky to not be injured too many times, but uh, I got an injury. We was, uh, in, it was like an injury would happen before an important game, and I had to recover quick. And uh, I remember that when I faced this injury, I was like, okay, I have two choices. I can be sad. I say, it's over. I'm not going to be able to play this important game. It was the semi-final of the Champions League. I can be sad or I, or I can be positive and be ready to think about, yes, I may play. I may play. I may play. So it's, I think it's always this mentality to say, I'm injured, but it's not over. I'm taking the time to be, as an injured player, to see I'm going to improve my game. How do I do? I was not playing, but I was watching my teammates on the side, training. I went to the training, even if I was injured. I went to see my teammates play. And I learned a lot because I was listening to the coach. I was watching my teammates and I was like, hmm. Because sometimes when we play, we just play and just play. But when we watch and see the training and listen to what the coach is saying, we improve even more. So I use the time as an injured player to say, okay, I cannot run, I cannot train, but I'm going to train my tactic to understand better the football, to see what the coach is expecting. So sometimes I was going to see the coach and talk to him about the choices. I was watching my teammates. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to be sad. I'm just going to use this time to be better. So being injured is not a fatalistic time it's just an opportunity to maybe improve have you been injured yeah what type Long of injury time. um ligament there. ah acl yeah that's a ligament the six month yeah it's over yeah it's over already okay but i have another question it's regarding like like tournaments so I, I play for my school, so um, before a big match, uh, what's your like diet plan or the day before? What's your preparation for the match day? What is my preparation for the big games? Yeah. Okay. So my preparation for big games, <laughs> small games are the same. <laughs> it's um, what I like to do. It's uh, don't change my what I do. So it's uh, the day before the game, I like to watch when I was playing pro, I was watching the, the, the opponent. I was watching the opponent, but you guys are young, so you may not have the videos of the opponent. But uh, sometimes I, I just remember some actions I was, that I was doing. I was remember, okay, I want to do a nice tackle, but just thinking a not the entire night about the game. No, 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 no. But just sometimes, okay, preparing myself the day before, eating well, uh, eat like my good pasta, the, I mean, the good food to prepare for the game and uh, not going to bed too late. But I was living a normal life, not being like, okay, I need to be like uh, focused. No, 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 no. I was just doing what I like. I was um, watching a little bit of TV, talking to my friends, family, uh, not sleeping late, of course. And the day of the game, I like to watch, uh, I like to listen to music, uh, to not be too much stress, even if I was stressed sometimes, but it's normal. Uh, I was talking to my teammates, 
to feel confident because sometimes, uh, most of the time, I was talking to the teammate to say, okay, we should play this way. We, okay, tell me if you see a problem. So it was like a, a talk to feel more confident, you know, because as we play as a team, it's also too important to talk to the teammate and say, okay, how oh, do you want this ball? Do you want me to pass these balls like this? Or I say, okay, I'm, I have some difficulties with this player. Can you help me? Will you be able to help me during the game? So this is how I was preparing for the game. And uh, yeah. I, I, I think, Abby, you spoke about the diet. Do you have a specific diet on game day, uh, Laura? Like uh, what, so the, the, what you eat or what like you a... don't eat at all? Or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the specific diet, we were like, uh, we, we eat with the club most of the time. So it was like pasta, uh, uh, French, French culture food, but it was pasta or rice, uh, chicken, um, some uh, yeah chicken so white uh, white um, how you say uh, viande uh, meat. Meat. white yeah. meat and then like uh, yogurt fruits uh, vegetables the classic a classic but the day before I was eating well but during the week you know I was like eating normally I was not putting pressure in eating I knew I was not going to the McDonald's I was not going to eat the fried food and everything. <laughs> But I, I wanted to eat normally. I think we should not put any pressure in, in eating. It's just like a good balance to eat, but not too much. But we have to enjoy life. We have to be who we are. Some players, mm -hmm. they eat a lot, and they are still able to play good. But it's true that we've, uh, we have to be happy with what we do. Hmm. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Kunal, Kunal, you have a question, I think. Coach Kunal. Uh, hi, hi, Laura. Uh, Kunal is, uh, is one of our coach. So, um, I, beautiful sharing, Laura. Very inspirational. Wow. Um, I think a lot of kids would, would love to follow your footsteps. But, uh, Laura, I have five questions for you. So, yeah. uh, I'm going to go I'm ahead. Ready. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, it, it will help the kids as well. Number one is um, who's your role model? My role model was Lilian Thuram. So sorry, it's a player who won the World Cup in 1998. So you may not know him, but I will tell you why he was my role model. He was a nice person at all. He was a nice person. Uh, he, was, he was playing for the French national team. He was really nice. I was at the Institute. And every time he was at the Institute with the French national team, uh, he was coming to see the players and he was saying hi. And just for that, he was my best player. And we were playing the same position. <laughs> wow. And I said, I just want to be a nice player to people. This is how he inspired me. And he's a friend of mine today. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> loves the to have in France. Huh? He's the best. <laughs> and the untouchable player, because as you, as you said, I don't, I don't know him personally, but he looks like a really nice guy. He's nice. And it shows, it shows that actually you can also succeed in sport or even in business or whatever. Mm -hmm. And st still being a nice guy, you don't you don't have to yeah. kill the opponent to be to, to be the best in a way. Exactly. For me, it's why also I love Lilian. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Kunal. Kunal. No problem, sweet. Uh, Laura. Um, so so in, in terms of playing soccer or the sport, you know, did you did you ever have a bad or good coach? And if you ever had a bad or good coach, you know, how did you handle that person? Yeah. So uh, uh, okay. In my story, I didn't tell you what happened. I didn't tell you everything, but I had, like, in my career, a coach. I thought that football was just not going to be easy, I know. Sometimes it's complicated with the teammates because there's jealousy and everything. And I thought that the coach represented the person who is neutral. But I got a coach who couldn't see my face. It was really hard on me. He asked me to leave the clubs many times. Uh, but I said, it's okay. We cannot be uh, at friends with everybody, even with the coach. So I said, okay, I'm just going to focus on the game and respect the coach's decision. And if I see I cannot play because I don't have the level, it's better to leave. But I didn't want to criticize the coach to say, I'm not good because the coach is not good. No, 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 no. It's like someone who say, I'm not good in English because the, the professor is not good to me. He's not nice. No, I want to learn English. So I need to learn English, maybe not with this coach, but I didn't want to say that the coach was 
not good, so I was not good because of the coach. But yeah, and and I also had good coach. I had a coach with who we were singing song before games. It was interesting. <laughs> wow, nice. You mentioned that you were a shy person. I'm not sure if, if shyness is more of a um, cultural issue, but did you, did you ever overcome your shyness till today? Um, I was shy that some sometimes I didn't want to say something. Sometimes I wanted to talk about something and I said, uh, I don't know if I want to say it. So this is the shyness that I have. When people were in group, I was not talking too much. I was observing. Mm. Uh, and I changed when I went to the US because people were nice to me. And then I said, ah, okay, so maybe I can talk. But at the end, it's like, don't wait for people to be nice to you to talk. <laughs> if you need to say something, go ahead. So it's little by little to take small steps. It's okay, I'm trying today. I want to talk. Okay, I'm trying today. It's, it's to, sometimes we need to, to leave the comfort zone to improve. This is the advice I will give the, the young players who are shy. Just try a little bit, a little bit. And those who are not shy, try to help the, the one who are shy to express themselves, to give them confidence. Yeah. But I know the coaches, you will be helping the kids. Yes, yes. All, but all of us are, are helping the kids uh, mm. to be to be included in the team. Last two, Laura, I'm uh, almost mm -hmm. there. So uh, during your, your career in, in playing as well as studying, you know, was there ever a hardest moment in your life uh, that you faced and how did you overcome it? Um, during my career, the, besides football, if there was like a hard time or during football? Maybe both. You can just share one. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the hard time was when the coach said he didn't want me in the club anymore. Mm -hmm. It was really hard because I, we were coming, we were professional with Lyon and they recruited a player uh, abroad and the coach said, no, we don't want you anymore. I was trying, I was trying. I thought it was, I wanted to stop football at this time again. And uh, it was really hard. But I said, mm -mm, I'm not going to leave the club. So I stayed one year, knowing that the coach didn't want me. It was really hard. It's like you, you are in a place and they don't want you, but you still stay. It was hard, but I did my best season. I did my best season because I said, I'm not going to focus on what the coach said. I'm just going to work and have fun in what I do. That's why I say, sometimes we are in an environment where people are nice, and when they are nice, it's good. But when people are not nice, you can still be good at what you do and enjoy it. Because at the end, it's, it's about us. It's not about the people around, it's about us. So yeah, I did my best season and the coach said, okay, you're leaving, <laughs> but it's okay. I left, <laughs> but I was happy because I was, I was feeding myself. Okay. okay, last last one, Laura, almost there. Yeah, so yeah don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> I'm, I'm worried for the time as well, and others who have questions. Uh, aggressiveness, you, you mentioned that you were you were very aggressive as a player. Um, so how did you control your emotions as a player, one and two, as a role model? So I was aggressive because of my position. I was not that mean, I was not mean to people. I was aggressive as a player, like. I am a defender, you, the ball pass, but someone don't pass. It's not, you're not passing if the ball is not passing. So uh, I, I learned to be, to accept I was like this. I was like, this is who I am. This is, uh, people are scared. So I'm doing it right. Uh, but then I said, okay, <laughs> I needed to, to say, okay, I need to learn more, to be less, less, be more like anticipating the ball and not being like always in contact. Uh, but what the hardest was the emotion because sometimes uh, I wanted to tackle the ball uh, because for me it was easier and everything. But then I, I said, okay, Laura, well, you need to breathe a little, to take the time, to breathe, to observe the game. So yeah, I took more time to study the game to say, okay, maybe we won't use so much aggressivity, but more the tactical positioning. This is how I, I try to manage my aggressivity or my emotion. 
to be a better player, like to improve the anticipation, uh, yeah, to not be frustrating with the contact. Well, uh, Fuller, I thank you so much. Uh, I have no more questions. Thank you, Coach Kuna. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I see because it's quite late now here in Singapore, and I guess maybe the parents need the kids, or, uh, yes. and I don't want to. No question from the parents. Of your time, Laura. No, no more question, guys. No parents. The, Ariana the, looks like she has a question. Oh no no no! Sinia, you? No. Who? Someone Ariana. Who? Ariana. No, Sinia, you also. Why? Sinia, you first. I have seen the, you know, the raised the uh, and hello, hello. No, so Nick, I you need maybe. to unmute Nick if you got question. Uh, guys, you listen. You don't have question about the girl. Uh, Ariana, Ariana has a question. Ariana, go for your question. Um, what qualities do you think makes a strong footballer? A strong footballer. The qualities. That's a good question. Um. The I would say the the humility make a good footballer. I would say the humility to understand that may, you may be good, but you still need to work. <laughs> and uh, mentality, because most of the time you can be really good player, talented, good skills, but at the end it's like, how do you do to face the hard time? How you do? How do you get back on your feet? Or do you not be destabilized, destabilized, I don't know, by the situation? Let's say you see Mbappé, we lost in the Euro, and everybody's criticizing him. He's good. But now it's interesting to see how he will react. Can he, will he stop playing, or will he be even better to tell, I'm not going to give up? And up, good players, they overcome the difficult times. So to be a good player, you have to be mentally prepared to accept the critic, but also to be humble to say, okay, I need to work on myself and continue to improve. Yeah. Right. We have Sarah Vanish, I think, with a question. Yeah. Hello. Uh, Are you in a taxi? <laughs> uh, I'm in a van. <laughs> go, go. How... Um, have you ever got into an argument and how did you overcome it? Well, like, argument, it's hard. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, uh, it didn't happen a lot, argument. I don't like to argue, but it happened one day. It, it happened outside the field. So I just, I just expressed what I had to tell the person, even if I was shy. And I say, it's okay. We are not. A, we don't agree with this, but this is how it is. Yeah. Just tell what you have to tell. If the person is okay and smart to understand, it's okay. But express what you have to tell and move on. Thank you. Yeah. Or try it. Maybe bring someone to help you with the discussion if it's hard. But just say what you have to say to the person, and then you say, okay, we may not be. A, we may not agree. But, it, but this is how it is. <laughs> I accept. I accept this to not that we are not agree. It's okay. <laughs> Thank you for Steve and uh, and the coaches who are here uh, for the but for the work that you do with the guys for, with the kids. Your role is really important uh, to talk to the kids to give them a confidence. So thank you for that. I'm glad that you are working with you. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Francois. We are here from France. Whenever you have any questions, they are here. Really nice kids. I, I call them kids, but we pretty have the same age. Um, fortunate to have them in my team. Uh, I mean, to be part of their team. So whenever Steve or the coaches, you have questions, they are here for you guys. The girls and the boys, the players, shy or not shy, I wish you the best. Enjoy football. Don't let people tell you that you cannot. Be proud of who you are. Play football with your heart. And I hope Pretty soon I will come to see you face to face and I can play. I'm not aggressive anymore. Thank you very much, Laura. Merci pour le travail. Merci. Thank you so much for your work, guys. It was a pleasure. Merci. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bye bye.